Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a little chat about one of my favourite Space Marine chapters. I want to say favourite, I mean, I have a tremendous amount of respect for them. I think they are perhaps one of the ballsiest Space Marine chapters just in the history of Space Marines as a whole. They, the, the sheer brass monkeys on this lot is kind of unreal when you consider the context in which they exist, because they are a successor chapter of the Blood Angels. Now, of course, the Blood Angels, first founding, one of the original legions, the Ninth Legion, and they had a slight issue. Well, in fact, they've got two slight issues that persist pretty much all the way through. They have the Black Rage, which is a problem. Not so much an issue at the time, because Sanguinius wasn't dead, but Sanguinius is now dead, and the Black Rage is a slight problem for the Blood Angels because they tend to go a bit mental on the eve of battle tend to go a bit insane, having visions and flashbacks and reliving the memories of Sanguinius in his final days, fighting in the Battle for Terra. So, not great. Not a great issue to have. And the fact that it kind of passes down to successor chapters is even less ideal. Black Rage is not exactly what you want. But it could be worse. I mean, a, a, a ridiculous killing frenzy is, is not bad for a Space Marine to have. I mean, it'd be nice. It could be a bit more controlled or cured. That would be good. Neither is really possible, except for one, Mephiston, because he's just... Yeah, sure. The other issue, of course, is the Red Thirst. Now, if you're not familiar with the Red Thirst, I will just read you. I'll, I'll read you the entry from the 40k wiki, just straight out. One of the genetic flaws of the Blood Angels Space Marine chapter is a vampiric craving for blood known as the Red Thirst. The Blood Angels and all the Space Marines of their successor chapters generally have pale skin, moderately elongated eye teeth, and a strong urge to drink the blood of their enemies, which can go stronger over the solid decades of their service, eventually causing degeneration into uncontrollable madness. Again, not ideal, not great, something that you kind of... You sort of want to keep to yourself as much as possible, you know? You don't really want people to go around thinking, oh, look, it's the Space Marines, the ones that dress in red, look a bit vampiric, and actually want to drink my blood. No, you want to keep that on the down low. You want to be sensible about who knows this sort of thing. I mean, it could lead to all sorts of problems. Sanguinius himself was incredibly not happy with that as a flaw, really wanted to find a way to cure it. He did not want to end up being yet another lost legion and another lost Primarch. That's not what he was after, and the Red Thirst was a vast part of that. So, you are a successor of the Blood Angels. You are one of the, you know, you, you, the Blood Angels, a storied legion. They are, they are beautiful and elegant and superlative warriors, and you absolutely don't want to draw attention to the fact that they've got a flaw. You really don't want to do that. That would be a bad idea. So what... What would this successor chapter be called in order to keep that sort of thing nice and secret? The Blood Drinkers. That's what they're called. There is a successor chapter running around of the Blood Angels that is literally simply called The Blood Drinkers. That is why they win. That is why they win the award for the ballsiest chapter. Not only, not only are they still called The Blood Drinkers, now... I'm pretty sure if you want to, you can change the name of your Space Marine chapter. You know, you could have a meeting, perhaps gather all the Blood Angels successes together, and the Blood Angels themselves, and say, lads, lads, here's, here's the thing, right? We've got this problem with the Red Thirst and the Black Rage. It's not great. It's not a good look. You know, wanting to consume the blood of your enemies is a little bit barbaric, not exactly the kind of image that you want to project to Imperial citizens. You know, you want them to... You want them to fear you, yes, but you want them to be glad you've arrived, not think, oh dear God, they're going to literally eat my family. You don't want that. Do we think, perhaps, that calling ourselves the blood drinkers is a little bit on the nose? Is it not a little bit attention? Is it not kind of giving the game away to some degree that there is an issue that perhaps people wouldn't want to know about when it comes to uh, our particular founding legion and successors? They could maybe do that. Or they could they could do they could do the absolute opposite of that. Because the blood drinkers aren't just called the blood drinkers while suffering from a vampiric thirst for blood that is inherent to the entirety of the Blood Angel successors and the Blood Angels themselves. Oh no, no, they don't just have the name the Blood Drinkers, which is, let's face it, a little bit out there. They also are one of the only chapters 
successor chapters <laughs> to actually embrace it and be like, you know what? You know what? It's nothing to be ashamed of. We'll just consume vast amounts of blood. Let's make our own rituals and things. Let's actually make it a part of the deal, whereby everyone knows that the blood drinkers, they like a bit of blood. They'll set it up. They'll get it going. They don't hide from tradition or anything like that. No, no, no. They just embrace it and go with it. They have rites that they have done in order to just drink blood. Now... In terms of Space Marine chapters who are absolutely full of confidence, who are completely and 100% okay with who they are, the Blood Drinkers don't just win like a, a, the first category, they're all over it. They are by far one of the absolute ballsiest Space Marine chapters in existence by some considerable measure. Because they haven't just looked at this flaw that is incredibly dangerous and problematic for their their founding legion and all the other successor chapters as a whole, and gone, no, I think we're cool with the name Blood Drinkers. They've actively embraced it. Now, depending on the order of things, it could be that they were called something different, and then they just decided, no, we can we can make this into a thing. We can turn this into a nice family event, drinking blood. Or alternatively, they were given the name Blood Drinkers, and instead of doing everything they could to distance themselves from this slightly fucking weird issue of wanting to drink blood all the time, they went, well, I mean, we've already got the name, so why not? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's have at it. Let's make it a, make it a big event. Let's go for it. What the hell? It's so, it's so ridiculous. And, stu- and like, it's properly over the top and mad. It's proper, like, 40k logic. Well, they're the blood drinkers. They have the issue of wanting to drink blood all the time, as do all of these other chapters. But they're called the blood drinkers, and so they're going to make it a thing. They're not going to hide from it. They're not going to try and do it behind closed doors. They're not going to be embarrassed about the fact that they feel a desperate craving to drink blood. Oh, no. No. They're going to go full on, let's go it. Let's do it. Let's fully embrace this really severe and dangerous floor with us. Let's go for it. Now, the runners-up, the runners-up to the, uh, to the blood drinkers for, for, for kind of, you know, ballsy approaches is also the flesh eaters. Now, the flesh eaters are slightly, slightly different in that I don't even know if they're around anymore still, but they were a thing. They were called the Flesh Eaters. They had a symbol that, if I remember correctly, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it, that looked kind of a bit orky in a way, which is kind of funny. But they were called the Flesh Eaters. That's that that's that's pretty out there. But as far as we know, they don't they didn't actually or or like as far as is known, they didn't actually eat flesh, or don't actually eat flesh, whether or not they're still around. It's still kind of ballsy, calling yourself the Flesh Eaters, but I suppose it's not that far from the Flesh Terrors. And whilst the Flesh Terrors sounds a bit full-on, at least it's not like, yes, here is our here is our gene seed floor, we've made it our name, let's go. So not quite, not quite as full-on and as mad as the Blood Drinkers, but in terms of just having the bravery, having the guts, having just the, the gumption to power through and embrace the name that is an actual descriptor of one of the biggest flaws with your gene seed and your founding (laughs) chapter's gene seed, the blood drinkers win hands down. Tactically, don't know. They might be fine. They're probably great. I mean, they are space marines. I'm sure they're very good at what they do. But calling yourselves the blood drinkers when you have the red thirst is by far one of the absolute ballsiest moves that I think exists in 40k, just on a continual level. I love it. It's so good. It's it's so it's so it's so mad. It's like what the hell is going on? Who came who gave them the net? Did they pick it themselves? Did the chapter master go, you know what? I've got an idea. Or was it was it like a committee thing? Was there like a big group of of like, I don't know, say ten senior people from the spa- from the uh, the Blood Angels? And one of them went, do you think we should call them the do you think we should call them the blood drinkers? Is that a bit... Do you think we should do that? And everyone went, yeah, great. Like, did, did no one say, I, I don't know. I don't know. That seems a bit... That seems like asking for trouble, calling them the blood drinkers. Is that not going to raise suspicions that they, like, 
drink blood or something? And everyone else went, I don't know why he'd assume that. I don't know why he'd make that connection. It's just a name. It's fine. I mean, what? I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. There are other examples, of course, of things like this, which I'm thinking we'll probably go through, because there's quite a few, like... There's quite a few, not like obscure, obscure, but chapters that don't get a huge amount of attention that kind of deserve a bit more. Chapters that are a bit weird and a bit off and have some interesting background but don't get a huge amount of spotlight. We'll probably go through and find some of the more kind of uh, esoteric and interesting ones and talk about those in the future as well. But I basically saw someone mention the blood drinkers on Twitter and I suddenly remembered, oh yeah, yeah, them, what the, f- what the hell is going on there? So yeah. One of my favourite Space Marine chapters by far, The Blood Drinkers. Uh, 10 out of 10. Keep at it, lads. The courage, the bravery, and the absolute like nonsense of maintaining that name while suffering from the red thirst. Absolutely love it. Great work. Excellent. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That was d- d- just a random thing. Probably do more of them because they're fun. Um, let me know what you... Actually, let me know what you're like... In terms of, in terms of chapters that really are showing quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of, of of bollocks for walking around the way they do if you've got any like top nominations put them in the comments because then we can we can talk about them more and kind of build up a nice list of the chapters that are really taking the piss frankly which is what this lot are doing so yeah let me know in the comments down below in the meantime feel free to click all the things patreon video subscribe all that stuff click it if you like don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there is an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, whereby you can buy stuff, and if you do buy stuff, then I get something for sending you that way. 10% of it goes to charity, and it's way cheaper than buying straight from Games Workshop. So you can do that if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.